Hi, Diana's back with some more Flat Earth news. Anyway, what I wanted to show you was something that I did. Uh, this is what I have on my truck now. It's um, an advertisement. So, I, this is really old, but I thought of doing one for the Flat Earth. And this is what I made one morning, real quick, just before work. You know, clicking away, hurry up, you know, that kind of thing. So here it is. Magnet. Magnet. It's really better quality than this old one. It's thicker, and you can do that too on Vistaprint, or make whatever you want. It doesn't have to be a magnet. It can be brochure, flyers, etc. Um, I've been doing using Vistaprint for years, and uh, for my art promo, which now is so much cheaper than it used to be. Years ago, you know, I'd spend hundreds of dollars just for, you know, <clears throat> a bunch of postcards. Now, a bunch of postcards can cost me like 25 bucks or less. So anyway, and I wanted to uh, show you this letter. Now, I had written, well, I, at first, um, a friend of mine in New York is a science teacher, or was, he's retired. And it was his birthday recently, and I sent him a little message, happy birthday, and we got talking a little bit. And so, since he was a science teacher, I thought, wow, you know, maybe he would be, you know, open to the flat earth, or maybe he would at least investigate. So I had written to him, um, and then he wrote back to me. Uh, this is what he wrote. Um, Diana, now... I am now visiting my grandchildren and having a nice time, but I cannot get out of my head your last email in the enclosed videos. When you first mentioned a flat earth, I was hoping you were kidding, but now I see you are not. I am always without words. Almost without words, I'm sorry. As a science teacher, I always encourage my students to question. This is a healthy approach. You took astronomy. Even without space photos, you should have been able to answer the flat earth versus spherical earth question. You lived in New York, where you have four distinct seasons. The earth has an axis which is tilted. It rotates around the sun with the tilt remaining the same. This explains the seasons. A flat stationary earth would not have this. When you are in New York in January, it is cold and often miserable. You can fly south to sunny Florida and experience instant summer. This is because the Earth is a sphere. An end, an, <clears throat> excuse me, an add in the tilt, you get much more direct sunlight in Florida than New York, explaining the temperature difference. Again, a flat Earth would not have this. Now, you know, he's giving me some third grade science, which is essentially parroting what he learned. Now, after sending the videos, I thought, well, this would give him, you know, or at least trigger some sort of investigative uh, inclination, you know, something. But uh, it seems like, you know, questioning is not really you know, the, the objective. You know, the objective is to continue to parrot. Okay. I could go on and on, but it is even more basic than that. Ever since Columbus, many thousands of people have circum circumnavigated the Earth, starting with Magellan and crew. Thousands of ships and planes have done this. You can even do this yourself if you had the money. If you started at the equator and flew due west or south, I guarantee you will return to your starting point after approximately 25,000 miles. As a matter of fact, you could start anywhere on the planet, and as long as it, had, it was a great circle, you would return to your starting point. If the earth were flat at some point, you would encounter an edge. If the earth were flat, this edge would extend for, for many thousands of miles. <clears throat> Have you ever heard of anyone encountering this edge? Has anyone fallen off the edge? No, even the ancient Greeks recognized the earth to be a sphere. Around 
2250 BC, the Greek mathematician Eratosthenes, using simple geometry and some footwork, actually calculated calculated it correctly. <laughs> Do you honestly believe there has been a worldwide cover-up regarding the shape of the Earth spanning centuries? I have heard of conspiracy theories, but this one tops them all. But I guess this demonstrates that for every conspiracy theory, there is someone willing and ready to believe. And for some, the more outrageous it is, outrageous it is the more appealing it is. I watched your videos. It was not easy. Instead of spending six months studying such nonsense, you should be asking yourself why you have been having me to listen to such nincompoops and quacks. If, ever, if someone is willing to believe this, they are probably willing to believe almost anything. I have been trained in science. I am glad I live at a place and time in history where I am free to learn the truth about the earth and the universe we live in without being persecuted or burned at the stake. It is an insult to all the dedicated, hard-working scientists of the world to accuse them of some conspiracy. I marvel at the breathtaking photos taken by the Hubble telescope and all that has been learned from this telescope. I am astonished that you would believe that this is all a hoax, incorporating literally thousands of scientists. Scientists are interested in finding the truth, and they do this by accumulating evidence. The group you have been listening to is only interested in creating a movement. They have no evidence to support their ideas. I think I sent evidence. In a way, they are quite dangerous. Stay well. Bob. Okay, so how dangerous can this be? Uh, people questioning, investigating. Um, uh, evidently, you didn't look at evidence um, that I can see. I mean, I sent two videos, and um, there was some really compelling information about the year. So. Uh, I do suggest that, Bob, well, you look again. Okay, so if you have any comments, Flat Earthers, to tell Bob, please do. Um, we know what's going on. Uh, we've been up and down, inside and out of this, and uh, evidently, <coughs> Bob's not investigating. And questioning is important. So anyway, that's it for now. I uh, wanted to share that, and hopefully, and maybe I'll send this to Bob because um, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. You know, a scientist who or science teacher who just you know pushes things aside like that rather than really digging deep because it takes it does take some digging. So I'll leave you with that for now, and thanks for watching, thanks for your videos, I love you, and um, till next time, might come up to some, oh, and go to Vistaprint, please, uh, make whatever you need, it's pretty cheap, uh, magnet, I can't remember what it cost me, probably eight bucks, something like that with shipping, maybe it was, you know, thirteen dollars, I don't know, they have bigger ones, of course, like the one I showed you, you know, that I had for my truck, big ones. I'll make some more. I'll make some big ones too. But I don't know if I put this on my truck along with that one, the other one, with the flat earth. They might think I'm crazy or not, but call me. Um, but I will be putting it on my truck. I will. And there, this is just a design that I chose. It happened to be one of theirs. It was kind of, you know, you can put what you want in here. But I thought this, you know, was uh, a good uh, color in you know, design without even, without creating my own design, because I can, you know, create something that's more earth-like or whatever, but, um, I didn't have anything, I didn't even have a, um, a good high-resolution photo of my flat earth map, so I will eventually do something like that, and more, 
I was gonna make flyers, you know, hand flyers out, and I will, I will, you know, when I get, you know, get the right wording and whatever you want to say, and all of this stuff. Okay, thanks. Bye. See you later.